around a thousand right now. It's got a sequential in it. Definitely obnoxious. All right, guys, what's up? Welcome to the Drift Games vlog. We're here with Adam. Adam, thank you so much for allowing us to come into yeah, your course. compound. Look, everybody who watches our channel is aware, I would imagine, of what you've done here and the crazy place. But today, we get to look at it from our perspective and see kind of maybe the things that are normal to you that are definitely not normal to us. The weather, even for us, is not normal, so that's probably normal to you now. We are here, what, five months now? Yeah, I think we moved in around like March, I wanna say. So it's kinda new, but we're getting there. We're getting set up. Is it lot? Like, we took a tour with Duarte earlier, and I was just thinking how much work it is to do one small piece of this and then you've got so many pieces all together so I'm sure it's a long project but Adam's gonna give us a quick tour around we're gonna have a look at some of the cars just yeah, see what happens just have a little, little casual stroll around and see what happens I don't know how casual it probably casual for you not yeah. so casual for us at this stage but we're gonna hop in the golf cart and go for a spin and ask some questions and see what we get up to let's do it <sighs> Casual. Yeah, so that's a helicopter landing <laughs> pad. <laughs> Unofficial. Yeah. So we'll show you quick, like, so this is the, the big storage building. Um, when I got this place, all this was already set up like this. It was all this nice, beautiful concrete. This whole building inside pretty much didn't even touch it. Like, everything was in immaculate condition for sitting for almost 10 years. And it was 10 years and nobody here at all? Pretty much. Wow. So this was a car collector's home. Yeah. And then he passed away. Yeah, so uh, elderly gentleman. Had a good bit of money, just decided he wanted to restore a bunch of 60s cars and built this compound kind of around that. I'm sure you have a lot of E36s back over there. We, we've less than we had. Yeah. There's, I, we were, I always made the comment that like everyone went to bed on a Tuesday and woke up on a Wednesday morning and said, E36s are now cool and expensive. All of a sudden, they're like so sought after. This one is pretty nice. And this is one that I actually think style-wise, I built one about, what did we build that, three, four months ago? Yeah. It's quite similar. I'm not going to lie. It was, it was white, but it was quite similar. I'd like say you took a lot of inspiration. DCR beds, fence and stuff yeah but just rear fenders don't look at those the fitment and those i <laughs> missed my old fenders but i was trying to fit a big tire um but yeah this is like the workhorse i love this car it's light it's super fun ignore the the i did a long <laughs> burnout and it got hot okay uh but yeah so it's a 3.4 jz um it's still like a single in tank fuel pump so it only makes like 550 wheel at like 12 pounds on the turbo but next season i'm probably going to turn it up it's just light and fast and the thing is it still has more to give Oh yeah, and it's plenty. Still, still fast as it is. This engine has before me in a thousand wheel. Really? So, yeah. Oh yeah. So I ran this same engine in FD, but this is like basically it's just like idling around clutch kickers yeah, is how just, we're running it. It's not even under pressure at all. Yeah, we'll leave that like that. It doesn't really. Look close. <laughs> they all do that. Yeah. Every time I try to take anything off a drift car, it just falls off. I'm like, oh. yeah, it's simple, nothing crazy. Like it's not the prettiest or nicest build in the world, but like I said, it's a workout, more course, it's light. And it looks good. Yeah. And the thing is, drift cars, I'm super OCD, so when there's like scratches or paint yeah. peeling. Yeah, but drift cars are always like that. This um, is like, these are, I don't even think I've ever seen a yellow. I've seen a lot of work sevens, but never a yellow one in the flesh. So these are rare. Yeah, they're rare here too. So this one's a right hand drive one. I think it has like 30 or 40,000 kilometers on it. So it's, wow. It's a baby, all original. I was going to do some stuff with it, and I don't really know what the plans this are thing right is now, but. Clean. Yeah. The biggest thing that's driving me nuts on this car is that they repainted it and it's not like the right yellow. Yeah, it's like so, they forgot to put the, another layer of clear on it or something. Yeah, I'm gonna end up repainting it, but still, I just I wanted a yellow RX-7 and this one popped up and I got it for half of what they're going for now. Really? Yeah. 
and it's stock wheels, stock everything. So it's very hard to find one that's totally untouched. Yeah, it's got everything. Like it's still got cats on it. Like just stock car. Yep. So, Crazy. I mean, it's it's like where do you find an RX-7 stock anymore? I know. Like, and who owns? Especially one? from Japan, they're all always yeah. have gauges and, and a big wing up. on the back. Yeah, that's really really cool. And E46. This is the Gunaseka boot. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's an E46 M3. There's a lot of E46 M3s around here, which is they're getting rare back home for us, but. This was supposed to be a giveaway car. I don't know if I'm going to do a giveaway on it anymore because I like it and I didn't really have time to build it. I was going to do a turbo S54 in it and I just didn't. The interior on this car is pretty I was going to say, I've never seen that. Yeah. It's the only car I've ever seen with it. It's like a, like an M pattern stitch cross. Which I, I think it's called speed cloth. Yeah. I don't know much about before. it, but I love it. Do you guys have a lot of these over there, the 335s? Yeah. yeah. We do. But Not the, so the, the diesel versions. No, we, we, so in Ireland everything is diesel because the government put in a big emissions thing about probably 10, 15 years ago. So everybody, so you go see 320Ds, 330Ds, and people map them and get good power out of them. But 335Is, there's a few, but they're generally seen as quite unreliable for yeah. some reason. They have that kind of a reputation. Same with this one. <laughs> <laughs> so they have... We have them, but I don't think anyone's taken it too far. I think they've kind of kept them tame because they're worried about things going wrong. I mean, that's the way to do it, I think, in retrospect. Like, the if you just upgrade the twins, they're yeah. reliable, they work well. This has got a big single. It makes, like, 750, but it just acts up half the time. Yeah. They're kind of a complicated engine for modifications, I think. And the, these E92s are getting popular. Like, the V8, obviously, the M3s are quite popular. I think we might put a 2J in it, just kind of... To get away from the misery. <laughs> yeah, that and like it's a big seller at Drift HQ, and I feel like it would be a good candidate wise. Like the car has a lot of sentimental history to me, but yeah. I don't want to. I don't like right now it's a paperweight. I never want to drive it because it goes into limp mode half the time, you know? Yeah, so then you want to get back enjoying the car again, you're going to have to put something. Yeah. Well, it's still going to get that much power out of it. And then S15s, we see a lot of these. Yeah, so this is just rare here. This is just a roller, just a car. I wanted to build a street car, and it popped up. I paid way too much money for so it. So what's the situation with, so you guys have a 25 year rule in the US that you can't register something before that? It's, it's a long story, it's complicated, but people bring cars over and once they're here, it's not that difficult to title them, register them, insure them. Bringing them over here is sketchy. I don't yeah. bring them over here, but uh, if I find them already over here and the price is decent. And then you've got this, that's one probably most people know you for. Yeah, so that's like my first drift car, a good old SR hatch. These are still the best. Yeah, oh, it's so fun. It's my favorite car to drive. Like I've, this is pretty much what I had as my pro drift car, which sounds funny, but I had an SR Wise Fab, and I still don't think I've driven anything ever that's just as nice as that is to drive. Just so predictable, so fun, and well, as I said, easy, easy yeah. to drive, easy to drift. Kind of what drifting is. Like everything else, I think is harder after this, but um, this one looks really, really cool. And then you've got a Mustang, which we definitely don't have many of these. Yeah. So we were only explaining that. Like in Ireland, the GT Mustang, new is, what do you say, $105,000. Wow. So when you see one of these, it's like, this is like an exotic car. But to here, we see them every two seconds. But this one is very special, lots of power. And this is the engine that, well, there's a guy in Ireland actually built a drift car, an East 36 wagon, Charlie Geary, with a bar engine in it. And uh, he's having misery. He's having an awful time with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I missed the the stock engine that came in this car. So this is a G350. I don't know if you guys have them over there, but it came with a Voodoo. So it's like a high revving flat plane, amazing car, like awesome on track, super fun. Burned down. Colette was driving on track, and the oil filters like had this tendency to back off and spray oil at the header. Caught on fire, and everything pretty much burned to the ground from the firewall forward. Wow. But I wanted to keep the car alive, and it presented a good opportunity to put a bear in, just because it it's such a tall engine that yeah. it doesn't fit in a lot. But I really wanted to do one just because they seemed cool. It was something new, four liters sick, and it works well. But I think I missed the original car a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's an ex it's an experimental engine, mm -hmm. and when you do experimental stuff, it's like eh. it just vibrates so much, <laughs> man. Like, and the thing is, like with these engines, I like. I mean, I've I'm still new to them because we never had them, mm -hmm. and then now people are talking about them as the next best thing. But I haven't seen one really work. It we're, works well. It makes great power. Just I think about say when drifting, we were like, uh, like you know, if it, if it was a good alternative to the two J, because two Js are getting so expensive now. These are a little less, but um, very strange that you would take a modern Mustang and then put an older engine essentially into it, the Ford engine. But it works. It fits real nice. It, it looks like it should yeah. be there, right? So this car makes I think 
around a thousand right now. It's got a sequential on it. A thousand? Yeah. Wow. It'll make more. I just got to put head studs in it, and I never got around to it because it barely puts the traction down now. I was going to say, does it need more? Yeah, no. Probably not, but you'll probably put more in it. Put, yeah. the, put the traction down even with these tires. Which well, it's is cool. I don't know what the one that you have. you heard the bear that you have over there? Yeah. I don't know if it sounds similar. Everyone says this one sounds like a V8. No one's ever heard one that sounds like it. I'll serve it up for you. Big Must be, you yeah, have the cam does does a little bit of work for it, but it's like, and on the outside, yeah, you could kind of just think it was the Mustang with some big tires in the back. Yeah. Except for the burn marks on them. <laughs> Got that for some patina. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, a patina on a car that's probably what three years old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it works. It's a good story behind it. All right, guys, we want to take a second to thank one of our partners here at Drift Games, Strom Wheels. Now, they have an amazing range of wheels for BMWs and for a lot of European cars, but on our drift cars, we run the DS25, which is an awesome looking wheel that comes in this hyper black. It also now comes in black and white and bronze, so you've got four colors to choose from. Check out their full range, and uh, if you want to know how strong these wheels are as a drift wheel, you're going to find out later in this episode how they've uh, kept us in the game. kind of get an idea like this shop obviously we just like mop the floors and stuff but this is how it looked after just, just like dust on the floor I can't. it's crazy right just left for 10 years yeah. and then like i suppose he was storing stuff so he wasn't there weren't customer cars in out in out they weren't really doing much work in here so i suppose i kept it nice but like i can't get over the condition of everything yeah for 10 it's years super clean um so these are like kind of i would say that car's not broken but that's just the you know yeah. So you got some My God, that door has been put in. <laughs> yeah. It's had some well, <laughs> It's created a new body line at this stage. Yeah, that, it looks cool. That makes the door that so I that's did. That's just Nothing. the cage literally holding that there. No, there's no cage. There's no cage in there? Is that the door brace? It sometimes it'll. <laughs> but it still opens and closes. Love that. But doesn't it look like there's a door bar there? And that's yeah, so there, there, is. there is. Like, no, there's a factory yeah. door bar. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's just folded around that. Yeah, that, that is a reason why a lot of series allow us to drive Z's without cages. Because they're that good in crashes. It's actually a very good safety point there that if yeah. you were driving a stock Z, well, you can't get to the driver anyway because that's someone's tried a lot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, most of these are like, I wouldn't say light taps, but it's just us like playing yeah. around. This car has seen a lot of action. I love this car. <laughs> I've learned more driving this car than any other car I've owned. And they're so simple and yeah. they work. This is uh, my nephew's car, it's just an HRZ, it's just been sitting. Um, this is just a random shell I bought. This car, I stole the motor from my other chaser, so it's just a roller right now. Mm. Needs an engine. And then nice, my R30, nice on the SSR though. Yeah. My R32 is just waiting on another engine. I snapped the snout of the crank. This thing looks, it still looks very good and very fresh. Oh, it's, it's fun. This yeah. thing rips. I'm a big fan of the Ford R32s. I don't know what it is, I just think, and I hate or 33 four doors, but 32 is just, I don't know what it is, they just look so nice. The just lowered kit, roof spoiler, nice wheels. They are a very, very cool car. 
I don't remember exactly what it made for power last. I think it was somewhere close to 700, but this I think is one of the fastest cars I own. It hooks up. Yeah, I put drag radials on the back. I can fit them on the stock fenders and on the street, no lift shifting this thing. Like, it is wild. I, I don't think I've ever seen a. I've never even heard of a four door with that kind of power before. Like, you'll get some top end pro cars, 32s of power, but 700 on the street is excessive. Yeah, AC, it's comfortable. Yeah. It, it was one of my favorite cars to daily. I daily it all the time. That is an excessive amount of power. That's what I'm thinking. Is like, we'll talk figures like that in Europe for track cars, mm -hmm. for drift cars. We won't talk about 700, 800 horsepower or 1,000 horsepower for a road car because, yeah, you should see our roads. <laughs> it kind of started as a drift car, but I ended up liking it more driving it as a daily than drifting, so it just kind of evolved yeah. into that. Um, this was uh, just another random project I got because it was a good deal and I took the motor out of. Two C sixes. Well, these I actually know. Yeah, Trevor's, and that's a drift H two car. And then all this stuff pretty much is mine except for Zeroy. So that's just a little ignorant project. Just twin turbo to stock engine in it. It lasted until it started putting traction down, and they kept blowing up. So we built one. Does very... this work now? Yeah, yeah, it does things and burnouts and goes fast. Makes that is an ignorant way to. <laughs> I think it makes like eight hundred wheel somewhere around there. Can you even see over that when you're driving? Yeah. You can drive it. It's actually kind of funny if you want to drive it around. I find it bizarre that you can drive this on the road. Like when we see this back home, you driving on the road. This would like, be an instant. You're just in jail before you even have time to say the word. Can't be taken off you before you even start. It'll... Oh, before, they just walk out and go. Yeah, we'll just take that. Yeah, you should drive it. I'll I'll pull it out. You can drive it around the combine. I wouldn't like go full tilt on it because it gets a little rowdy, but it's an experience. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it starts up like stock. Just hop in, start her up. It's a 370. It's over and back. It's definitely obnoxious. Over, over this way? Down, over and back. That view is ridiculous. It's kind of cool, right? It's like, yeah, you can see everything. You never would see any of this stuff. This is like Japan meets America. This is what people always do with LSs and stuff. Yeah. And I, I wanted to do it and it kind of worked out with us. Like, you know when they build the big stack intakes on yeah. like, the V8, this is the, the same with turbos. It's cool at night because it like shoots flames up in there. And bah, 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 bah. That's very cool. It's ignorant, but it's very cool. It's like the most uh, intense way of making your car. Everyone know that your car is with turbos. <laughs> Definitely no. It is um just drive it around a little. Just yeah, just drive drives like normal? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it is aggressive. There's the aggressive clutch anyways. This is all you can see. How <laughs> wild this looks. <laughs> It's also worth noting we have no idea where we're going. <laughs> yeah, I'm just driving around. I have no idea where to or where from. Oh, I know where we are now. We're back at the shop. I'll give it a rip here. Cool, it's real good, right? Yeah, like it's not. There's no lag. I expected it to be like a nothing, nothing, nothing boom. But it's just quite nice. Yeah, the dual variable cams help. Like, it's ridiculous. It sounds ridiculous. Yeah. And it's fast. It sounds so cool from the outside. Yeah. yeah. Like in, inside, even the fact you can see everything happening in front of that is a cool car. I'll pull it in unless you want to do a burnout. But uh, <laughs> turn it off. Let me just check and make sure it's cooling in it, and then maybe we can do a quick burnout.